we all know the amazing Beverly. I mean, she's like a walking ray of light. It is amazing the energy that she exudes wherever she goes. And of course, Beverly is not only an expert on Reiki and meditation and well being, but she is also an expert on journaling and how it can help transform your life. So I think after the meditation, Beverly will be talking to us about the power of journaling, uh, tips on journaling, and how it can help you to, to improve your own, your own life, especially now during these difficult times um, of lockdown and COVID. Um, I think you will all be uh, benefiting a lot from what Beverly has to say. So without further ado, Beverly, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Heidi, for that wonderful introduction. So as always, I would like everybody to sit in a comfortable position so we can begin our meditation. So if make sure that your back is straight and you can lift one cheek of your bottom and the other cheek of your bottom and don't lean back on your chair so you've got a nice strong firm back and suck in your belly button to your spine. Suck everything up from your perineum so you have a nice strong core and just slightly tip your chin towards your throat so it takes the pressure of your head off your spine. And now ladies, please close your eyes. Allow your eyes to relax. Allow your whole body to relax. Taking in a long, slow, deep breath. Breathing in love and breathing out love. Relaxing further and further. Breathing in love, breathing out love, allowing all the worries and cares of your day to disappear as you once more breathe in love and breathe out love. Feeling your body relax. Now imagine you are going on a journey to a secret magical forest. Taking a long, slow, deep breath and see the beautiful forest. See yourself standing in nature. Look around you at the beautiful trees. Listen to the birds chirping. Can you hear them? Notice the sun's rays gently pouring down on you and lovingly caressing your body with the beautiful divine healing light. You look ahead and you see there is a pathway veering off to the right. And you have the inner knowing that this pathway will take you on a very special journey. You feel the excitement building inside you. As you begin the journey, you think about the many trials and tribulations that you've experienced so far in your life to date. You think about all the sadness and all the joy that you've seen in this lifetime. You don't know why you're on this path, but you have an inner yearning, a deep calling to move forward 
no matter what the universe throws at you. Something deep inside you is calling you to this known destination as you keep walking down the path. You don't know why, but you're happy to keep following the path. You may not know where your destiny lies yet, but deep inside your soul, your higher self, your spirit, your soul is showing you your way. Can you see them? As you look ahead of you, you notice the pathway goes in three directions. You're not sure of which pathway to take. Which path do you want to go down? There's no right or wrong way, but listen inside and you will have the inner knowing which pathway to take. You see before you three beautiful white doves. Can you see them? Or can you feel their beautiful divine love? Feel their energy. Maybe this is a sign. Do you feel like following them? Are they going to show you the way? You just observe them for a while. And you slowly amble down the path. You kick something with your shoe and you look down and it's the beautiful acorn. You pick it up and as you hold it in your hand, you can feel the energy emanating. You feel it vibrating. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Look at the beautiful color. And then you have this amazing sense of wonderment, knowing the full potential of this acorn that can turn into a mighty oak tree. You feel the acorn's unlimited potential. You lift your head and you see the most incredible oak tree, big and strong, and you are amazed because you've been down this familiar path many times and you haven't noticed it. And all the while, it has been staring at you, right in front of you. You walk towards the oak tree and you see a tiny figure sitting next to the tree. And as you get closer, you recognize a familiar face of a very old sage. And as you get closer, he beckons you. And as you look into his deep, peaceful eyes, you have that sense of serenity and deep love. And as you get closer, he embraces you and you feel overwhelmed with the most glorious sense of unconditional love 
filling every cell and atom of your being. And it's almost as if you download thousands of years of knowledge that this wise sage has been carrying. And you come to the realization that it's been within you all this time also. You stand back and hold hands and you continue looking into each other's eyes. And then the sage invites you to sit next to him. And he hands you a piece of paper. You look at the paper and on it is written a message to a question that's really been concerning you. What is that message? Notice how relieved you feel. You now have the answer and know what to do. You thank the sage. And then he hands you a beautiful gift as you open the box. You pull out the most magnificent cloak. What color is the cloak? How does it feel? What texture is it? He tells you that you were meant to meet today so that you would know your destiny, your true meaning, your purpose for being on Mother Earth right now. All you have to do is to put on the cloak and trust that the answer will come to you. He invites you to do it now. Put on the cloak. Does it have a ribbon at the neck that you can tie? How do you feel? He tells you to close your eyes and look within and ask the question in your mind, what is my destiny? Why have I come here to Mother Earth to be in this physical body and be on this journey right now? in this time and space. And as the message comes to you, you feel your heart warm. And if the message hasn't come, you have that inner knowing that the message will come to you today be it later with friends, spending time in nature, or in your dreams. So you open your eyes and you're overwhelmed with excitement and you thank the sage because you now know exactly which path you need to take. You hug and embrace and you go off on your merry way with the inner knowing all is safe, all is well. You just reflect on everything that's happened as you walk down the path. And now taking a long, slow, deep breath. Breathing in love and breathing out love. 
and come back to the present moment, become aware of the chair you're sitting on, your body, the weight of your bottom and legs on the chair, and wiggle your fingers and toes. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes, knowing you are a divine being of love and light, and you deserve all the happiness, all the abundance that the universe has to offer. It is your divine birthright to lead a happy, purposeful, meaningful life. So open your eyes when you're ready. And now, dear friends, as you slowly come back, I want you to take your piece of paper or a notepad, and if you don't have one around you, no access to one, I will allow you this once to use your phone. I would like you to write down absolutely everything that you can remember about the experience you have just had. And if you can't remember anything, just write down how you are feeling right now. Just allow the words to flow. Maybe you can remember your message, the forest, the path. I will sound the symbols in a couple of minutes. Just keep writing. So dear friends, I can see some of you have finished and some of you are still busy writing, but hopefully the notes that you've written right now will allow you to return to them later so that you can fill out the rest. So this is what we call transformational writing 
automatic writing, expressive writing. We're writing from our heart and allowing everything to flow. So today I'm going to teach you some great tips to get in the mood for writing and about the different styles of writing. As some of you know, I used to be a registered psychiatric nurse, I've done psychology, I've done counseling, and I'm a holistic healer. So I've been working with clients on many levels, helping them to write through their experiences. And I have many feathers to my bow, but I find that writing is actually the best way because you have all the tools that you need within you. So you can write your way to health and happiness. And by the way, researchers have said that writing can improve your overall health, it boosts your immune system, and it will also make you feel happier. So these are three very good things to help you to write. And I know some of you will be going, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. It sounds a bit woo woo, but I'll go along with her, keep her happy. But the psychology and medical research have actually proven those facts. And they help to, amongst other things, we're living in an era now where life is uncertain. We've got the dreaded lurgy of COVID hanging around us. In France, we're in lockdown. I know some people are joining from England, they're in lockdown. And in many other countries, you know, in Monaco, they haven't got full restrictions yet. But we don't know what lies ahead of us. And this is the uncertainty. But what I do know, dear friends, if you write about how you're feeling, this will help to reduce your stress and anxiety. So I know that um, by doing this, you can also keep triggers, you can look for any patterns and see what's going on. You can also um, work with what you've got. I know like you can keep a monitor of your mood. I actually love because the, I've been researching happiness for over 20 years and the opposite or the other side is depression and writing does help depression. It helps you to cope with grief, uh, grief and loss, which we will all experience in our lifetime. And I love this quote by Anne Frank. I can shake off everything as I write. My sorrows disappear. My courage is reborn. So yesterday we had Remembrance Day. So I see our journey, our soul's journey, as a life of remembrance. And, you know, it's so important to give gratitude for our ancestors and, you know, the people that have come before us and the people that will come ahead of us. So the people that I've worked with that are suffering with reactive depression, sometimes they can't talk about how they feel. So this is really good way of writing it down. And it's like when you write it down, you're getting everything off your chest. So people who come to me, whether it's for Reiki or Psyche or other um, business coaching, they know I love getting them to write about absolutely anything. So journaling, will help to control your mood by helping you to prioritize your problems. It also boosts your immune system and it provides you an opportunity for positive self-talk because um, we have over 60,000 thoughts a day and most of them are negative and most of them the same thoughts playing over and over and over. So it's really good opportunity to write down your thoughts and analyze them and then write personal affirmations that are meaningful for you. It's also about developing a relationship with yourself because most of us keep busy 24 7 and we're not in touch with our feelings, our emotions. 
So it's a really good way to get in touch with that. And the beauty of journaling is that there are absolutely no rules. You know, maybe that's why it's successful, maybe why it's not. But you, you have the full potential within you to write your way to happiness, health and healing. So can I have a raise of hands? Did anybody keep a diary when they were growing up and do you still keep one now? Great. So you can either physically raise them or write in the, in the chat line. Also, does anybody journal? Just a couple of people. Great. So there are many types of journals. And um, let me tell you the dictionary definition. So the difference between diary and um, journaling is the diary has one definition. It means a book in which one keeps a daily record of events and experiences. And if you Google the definition for journal, it says exactly the same, but it also has another meaning, which could also be a paper or magazine that deals with a particular subject or professional activity. For me, I personally think journaling, because I used to keep a diary, but I had it under lock and key. I couldn't, I don't have one now, but I thought I'd show you this little box. So that's uh, pretending locks. So it's really nice you know, to have a diary that you know that nobody's going to find it. And I come from a big family, so even under lock and key, I still had to hide it somewhere so nobody could get it and break into it. And I'm sure a few of you will re remember that. And um, so journaling goes that extra step because you can go in much deeper and it's much more profound. And on holidays, recently I took four journals when I went sailing. Anna um, knows that I, I went on her, her boat. So I also, um, I had this journal with me, Breathe, from Thich Nhat Tan, which I like to write down my daily thoughts. I had a dream journal, which I can highly recommend a dream journal. And I keep this by my bed. So when I wake up, the first thing I do is write down my dreams because by the time you go for a coffee or the toilet, you come back, you've forgotten about it. Even if you only put the head in and you can come back to it later. And I had various meditation journals and I took with me my angel cards and we would reflect on these. And I had about four other packs of cards. Each day we would do a card and then I would go off to my cabin and reflect on mine and write down the meanings that come up for me because um, it's a great way when you're in that zone to come up. I've got my little notebook, All You Need Is Love, and you can see my cup, All You Need Is Love as well, and the lovely Natasha's on the call. Um, I think, Kim, you might have bought me this journal, and then I came back and Natasha gave me a little present just out of the blue because she'd come for a Reiki session with a bookmark exactly the same. So I call this one my love journal, my self love journal, because two lovely friends gave them to me. And I've been decluttering lately. So it doesn't matter what type of journal you have, but in my declutter, I found my chakra book from which I did learn chakras with, even though I've just finished seven weeks of chakra talks. I've only just found this yesterday. And you can see in the book, I've put all little butterflies and beautiful hearts and different things on all the pages. So you can do this on any notepad. And I know Marav, you know, her daughter turned four a couple of days ago and she had beautiful little things out and little fairies and little horns and things and it's good. I've got like a jar where I write down my affirmations and what I want and I put them in my little fairy jar. So there's many things throughout the day and I've been in the chakra talks, I've been holding crystals and saying how to use crystals 
and you can meditate with them and let them flow. So why am I showing you this? Is because it's really good to have a ritual. And in the morning, throughout the day, put in your daily action plan, when are you going to write in your journal? Find the same place that you do it. I've got a beautiful little um, altar made with loads of crystals. I play beautiful music or depending on my mood, I burn different essential oils. You might want to be outside in nature. It doesn't matter as long as you're in the same place, same time, same day. And there's loads of things that you can use for prompts. And one of them I would highly recommend is talking about self-love, write a list of 10 things, how you love yourself. And there's also, you can talk about what you're passionate about, family, friends, sports, hobbies. You might not be passionate about the things I've mentioned. You might hate them and you can also write about the things that you hate. So these are just little things to get you in the mood. And I could talk about it for hours, but I teach over a weekend course about journaling for better health. Um, for now, if, if anybody's interested in that workshop, you can let me know. But for now, I'm going to hand over to the lovely Marav, who for the past six months I've met on, online once a month, having a cup of coffee or a glass of wine or once a, a week. cup of tisane, eat once a week, yes, while we talk about the journey of Lady X. And she's a best-selling author of five books. I met her about three years ago through a lovely friend, Shelley Ward, who said, you've got to meet this incredible lady. She came to Nice to meet me, and she was teaching self-defense. A couple of weeks ago, she was in an event in Italy where she got an award for the amazing work that she does with women. And I think we, we should all give her an award for being a single mother of two children and writing all these books and keeping our, when I say we, I mean the Lady X authors because she's kept us motivated over the past six months. And she's had to, in lockdown, if you've got a husband, at least you've got someone to share the, the load with. And some of you might be in that position as well. But she's, she does so many other projects and she's just incredible. So without further ado, please put your hands together for the lovely Mirage. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Beverly. Um, so should I just start? Absolutely. Okay. So nice to uh, meet you here on video, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Um, I'm Ilav and uh, I am a power coach. Uh, I have been teaching self-defense, I have taught self-defense for over 20 years. Um, ever since I was in the military, I'm an ex-military from Israel, almost 40, and a very proud single mom of two little amazing girls, uh, which I can say have done much more to me and to my fighting spirit than two years in the um, toughest military in the world. Um, and uh, like Beverly said, I have been writing books uh, just for the last year. I've been publishing the books. I've always loved writing. Uh, writing was my getaway. And the reason I started uh, publishing the books is because I wanted my voice to be heard. Um, I've been going through, with my first book, I've been going through this process of uh, looking back at my story, my life story. and. Um, trying to deal with all the demons that I had in my life and putting it out there. And for me, publishing my first book was, uh, it took a lot of courage. Um, I was so scared that my family would never talk to me again. And they probably won't <laughs> once they read it. Uh, but I did it anyway. And it was a huge relief and liberation. And uh, that is when I felt that writing for me is, um, well, I kind of, in my mind, I call it my escape because it's a way that I can put everything that I feel out there and by showing how I feel to people who I don't even know, um, I inspire them to do the same and I inspire them to let their heart out. So this is how it all started and uh, I'm very happy to be here. 
I hope that I will be able to inspire you and to do something today to help you to conquer any goal. My subject today of speaking is uh, a bit different um, than Heidi and Beverly. We are all talking about the same thing, which is, you know, um, empowering yourself and moving forward and uh, accomplishing different things in life. And especially if you are into writing, but I'm going to talk about something a bit more physical. Uh, with, this is my secret sauce. And I'm going to talk about my power of warrior, which is, um, I call it POW, power of warrior. And uh, this is my specialty. I believe that every one of us has that power of warrior. And by power of warrior, I mean uh, our fighting spirit, especially women. I believe our fighting spirit is stronger than those that belong to men. Uh, I believe that every woman is born as a warrior, as a fighter. And um, we need that power. We need that power whether we are parents or not, because moving forward in life, every woman uh, gets to a point that it's almost a breakdown and in order to push it through a breakthrough, uh, we need to push that power. So um, our fighting spirit is something that we are born with. It is that power that makes you breathe first, that power that makes you push to obstacles, that power that uh, creates everything that you have in your life, that makes you walk, that makes you talk, that makes you fight, that makes you a dream and go to your dreams and accomplish them and um, it's a survival spirit and for me that I was born in Israel I went through four wars I went through uh, abusive relationships and I went through a lot of uh, challenges and difficulties and um, having that warrior spirit has been something that has saved my life uh, you know I've been in situations that I was um, taken as a hostage. I managed to escape. I've been in situations that I was almost raped and I managed to escape also. I've been in situations that I feared for my life and I've been in relationships that I didn't know how to get out of. And that uh, power of warrior saved my life. Uh, but, you know, to my um, benefit, all the hard situations that I've been in, forced me to train that power of warrior because if it wasn't for that I wouldn't have survived and um, in a normal person's life hopefully you don't need to train that power of warrior so often because you don't need to survive through really difficult challenges and difficult and um, you know difficulties in your life so if you do have that power of warrior and you don't train it the risk is that warrior will go to sleep and therefore if you ever need it it won't be trained enough to come and help you uh, and this is where my training comes through um, i also found that you know now that, now that my life is more stable and calm and happy and i'm raising my children and i'm accomplishing things in my life i don't need to survive anymore the power of my warrior uh, my fighting spirit is helping me to accomplish different things that i do want in my life and to live life in an unstoppable way instead of you know just trying to survive moment by moment day by day i am now in the next level of stepping up everything that i do and living a, a powerful and courageous life so this is what i want to explain to you today uh, about that power about something that you all have in you and you don't want it to go to sleep. You don't want to just um, let that warrior die just because it doesn't have any war to fight. Uh, we don't need that. We can awaken it in different ways and use it in different ways. So um, the warrior inside of you, the fighter inside of you will wake up when it needs to push forward. It will wake up when it needs to cross uh, limits. It will wake up when it feels that it's uh, push to the corner when it's a fight or flight uh, situation and since you don't I hope you don't have a life that is constantly uh, challenging in a way that you feel in danger the best way that I found to continue and uh, 
Yeah. Uh, hi, Martina. Yeah, it's important to know that our warrior is here. Uh, the best way that I found that we can continue to train our warrior is through physical exercise. Because what you want to do, you want to get to the situation that your body starts releasing adrenaline and dopamine and all the happy hormones that create that good cocktail in your body and it makes you feel that you are unstoppable. So imagine that you are running a marathon or climbing a mountain or having a really good spinning lesson or dancing your heart out to a song that you really like. Or um, even uh, I know that Beverly does also laughter yoga. So that has the same effect on your brain. So what happens is it releases all these really good hormones into your brain, into your body. Now what happens is with most people when they do this kind of activities and they enjoy that effect of the of the positive hormones in that moment and then it just goes down and you need to do it again in order to feel unstoppable. But what I found with my uh, with my clients, with people who trained with me, is that if we take that power and we, we use it as an activation mode, as a primer, in order to do what we want to do. The results are amazing. So um, imagine you have a speech or you have a, a webinar or you are doing something that is important for you and you just take 15 minutes before that to get all that adrenaline and the dopamine into your body. So dance into your favorite tune or jumping or exercising. Or for me, it's boxing. I love I love to do that. It, it makes me feel extremely powerful when I put, even just when I put on my gloves. So it's so triggered that when I put my gloves on, even without boxing, I already feel that I'm in that warrior spirit. And then, you know, pam, 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 pam. I have, I have uh, this meditation that I created that it tells me that with every punch, I am achieving something else. With every movement, I am feeling that I am empowered by my environment, by my surroundings. And it brings you into that high, the same high that you, uh, even have, you know, after having uh, good sex, not that I remember how it is, but <laughs> that feeling, you know, that you are in the top of the mountain, that you can do everything, that you can conquer that Everest, that you, um, you can go through miles, you are unstoppable, you can lift that bus if you need to. So you get to that feeling through that high level of exercise or high level of whatever you do that makes you feel so good. Um, and then in that moment, you always have your pen and paper ready near you and the minute you stop jumping around or sweating or whatever you start working because you want to use that adrenaline you want to use that flow. you don't want to just go and take a shower and let it go down and then sit and and use and you know use the calm if you use the calm the results will be calm but we don't want calm results we are here because we want something different because we want uh you know the saying israel to eat life with some pepper on it. We want to feel that fire. We want to work with fire. And this is what I am using for my life and for people who work with me. So what I do is um, when I go to the gym, when the gyms are open or when I do something in the home, I have this meditation that I created in my ears and it has shamanic drumming or whatever, you know, whatever makes you feel that energy. And it says, come on, you can do it. You are unstoppable. You are a wonder woman. Everything that you want, everything that you ever dreamed of is you know, in your hands, at your feet. The world is yours, whatever. And it, it goes higher and higher and higher and higher. And then it stops in the highest point. So there is no calm down. And then I stop there and I take my pen. And sometimes, sometimes I'm in the gym and I don't have any paper. So I just use my, my hands. And you would see me uh, walking around with hands all written over and I try not to take a shower until I write it down in the paper. And you use that in order to create what you need to create, to achieve what you need to achieve. Uh, you write and write and write and use all the techniques that Beverly and Heidi talk and will talk about. And that's it. Then you calm down. Then you make yourself a cup of tea and you go and take a shower and you relax. And then you can... Uh, reread and digest that information or see the next day and it is explosive it is it comes from another power it comes from you know when your body works hard your mind liberates and goes to other places and it's the same it's the same effect that you would have with a very calm meditation but on the other side so i'm not a person who can easily go into a calm meditation i need that action I love that action. Um, I, I need to sweat and to feel, you know, 
all fired up and this is what grit gets the best results for me. So I wrote down three steps that you can apply to any goal that you have. And you probably heard about, about those steps before. It's very basic, very um, you know, immediate. And you can apply it to whatever you want in your life, whether you want to, I don't know, lose five kilos or write a bestseller or uh, climb the next mountain or um, raise Wonder Women in your house or Wonder Dogs, whatever you have. So um, just three basic steps. But what I would do is I would do it just after I get all that adrenaline, that's just after I've been boxing, I've been dancing, I've been uh, doing things that make me feel really, really good. So the first step is clarity. It's really important that you, um, your exit point is extremely clear and done without any criticism, but seeing where you are right now and what exactly you want. Um, so let's take just the example of of writing a, a best-selling book. So the situation can be that you have this story that you want to tell and why do you want to tell it and who do you want to tell it to and um, the background of that story, where are you at right now with life and in life and everything without you know, thinking that uh, I didn't do this till now, that is a negative thought. You want to think about the now situation, the present situation, as clear as possible. So what I would do, I would take that as uh, day one, and I would um, do my high adrenaline exercise and meditation. And with my pen and paper, I would sit down straight after it or stand up straight after it or do it in the shower, on the walls, whatever works for you, and just be super clear with a clear mind um, and a strong body. And just write all what has to do with that situation, the clarity of the first Step of your goal. And the second step is being clear about your vision. So the same thing, you, uh, you do that kind of high intensive exercise or again, whatever activity that makes you feel good. Um, also a laughter yoga. So ho ho ha 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 yourself for 15 minutes. And then it has to be 12 to 15 minutes or even more, but it has to be more than two minutes because you want that effect to keep on running. And then you just get super clear about your vision. Which yoga? Laughter yoga. Um, it's really easy to do. Um, Beverly can explain about that. Uh, so what it does, it simulates the effect of, of, it creates laughing without a reason. Because like children, we are supposed to laugh without a reason. The Indians say that we're supposed to laugh for at least 10 minutes a day. And what happens, it releases all the dopamine in your brain, like if you just had a really, really good joke. And this is what you want. You want to release that dopamine and the adrenaline and all that happy cocktail of hormones that is naturally released into your body when you do these activities. And it's completely free. So um, getting clear about your vision is, is how you see your goal happening. If you want a best-selling book, um, maybe how many copies do you want? or how many prices you want, or when do you want this to happen, or how do you want people to react to you, how do you want people to see you, um, you know, you want to get your point A and point B super clear, uh, and do it straight after your hormone cocktail uh, is running in your blood. And then the third part, which for me is the most important part, and that is my specialty, is creating the, the gap between A to B, which I call the plan of attack. So what exactly do you need to do to get from your exit point to your arrival point uh, in as many details as possible? Um, all the steps that you have to do, all the time that it will take, the budget that it will take, whatever. And I like to draw a map and then to create like steps, uh, step one, step two, step three, and sub steps. So really get it as detailed as possible. Um, and what I always do is I always create a plan B and sometimes a plan C and D. So, you know, now we're in uh, COVID times, you always need a plan B and C and D uh, because you don't want to be stuck in the middle of your plan and say, okay, what do I do now? So if your plan is, for example, to have a big luncheon party in one of the libraries, um, so what do you do if there is no access to that library or you cannot do a luncheon party because you cannot leave your house or because you are not feeling well or because 
something happens and you have to stay home with your children. So have that plan B ready on their hand because it will help you to feel in control. And when you feel in control, your goals are truly unstoppable. I call it the plan of attack. Well, I am an ex-military. So, um, this I applied actually from the military because, you know, I was an operational sergeant and I would sit under the ground with these earphones for 16 hours a day and listen to all of what the commanders are doing with the soldiers and listening to what's happening. And my main job was to uh, make sure that if someone crosses the border, um, I need to tell it to the commander, the commander needs to tell it to the next commander, and it's all like a list of things that they have to do. And then there is the plan of attack. So what do we do when someone crosses the border? Uh, how do we uh, uh, kill them or hurt them or do something that will prevent them from coming into our country and so on? Of course, um, I didn't do the killing part. So <laughs> I just did the planning part with my commander. So when I applied the whole uh, plan of attack into my um <laughs> into my personal life and i always had a plan b to whatever i did so it's kind of like thinking you know you wish for the best but you plan for the worst so you think worst case scenario what do i do if this doesn't work what do i do if that doesn't work and that will create like a whole lot of pages of your plan and your plan b but you will feel extremely in control and you will feel that no matter what happens you know what to do and feeling in control um, takes the fear away from the situation, which we all have fears and blocks, and it creates the whole um, atmosphere around your goal of being unstoppable, because no matter what, you get this happen. And this is another principle that um, I use all the time. No matter what, I will get this happen. I will make this happen. No matter what, it's a no mercy approach. We're going to do this. We're going to achieve the goal. I have written and published my first book in 26 days, the second in 50, and the third um, in, uh, I don't remember, but it was around 60, and then later it took us six months, but for many other reasons. So that was because of that, all this process of getting super clear of what is the story I want out there and why the vision of who do I want the book to get to and then the plan of how do we do this? How do I handle the budget? How do I handle the group? How do I handle the marketing? What do I do if this doesn't work? What do I do if that doesn't work? Proper preparation prevents poor performance. If you have a good plan and you have a good plan B and C and D if you need, <laughs> that would help you. Um, of course, things can always get out of hand and there's always things that you cannot, you know, plan too, but still, you know, and also the practice will help you to always uh, be able to be flexible and improvise and so on. So I have a little exercise for you, uh, not for now, but for the time to come uh, in the next days, just choose something, a little goal and try this out. Um, I'm saying little, so it will give you that sense of achievement and you can see that this really works with everything. I even plan our nutrition and our meals this way. Uh, so I sit down in the morning and I, uh, I think and I write down. Writing has always helped me to clear my head because if I don't write it, it just gets all gibberish in my head and I feel overwhelmed about the things that I should do. So I have my endless to-do list everywhere and they really comfort me and I love them. Um, so take a goal and Think of, the, of these th three steps, and then the first day or the first moment you do that, a high adrenaline exercise or laughter yoga or whatever helps you to get your uh, hormone cocktail out there and be clear about your point A. Just work on the clarity. And then the next day, the next moment, you work on the vision in the same way, and the third time you work on the plan of attack. Then you get back to it, and it's all done You're in three steps or three days or three moments that you had that time to do that, you have created the whole way to your goal and your mind will follow, your body will follow and you will achieve it unstoppably, conquer everything. Believe me, because I've conquered everything that I wanted and I am still going through. So that's me. I, uh, I hope that this was helpful. 
uh, you're welcome. And uh, if you have any questions, so you're welcome to ask me or message or whatever you feel. <laughs> Thank you for, for listening. I love you, Martina. I love you all. Um, so, shall I, if there's no questions, shall I introduce uh, the amazing Heidi? Yes? Okay. So, um, Heidi, here on my screen, <laughs> is, um, uh, how did you say the Israeli saying? What do you mean the Israeli saying? I said so many things. Ah, yeah. We eat life with some pepper on it. So, Heidi is uh, our editor and co-author and an exceptional woman, uh, one of the kindest people I've ever known. Generous, beautiful, hearty, very, very talented. And she's uh, my literally right hand in all the books because without her there would be no books. Uh, she has the capacity uh, to read the book, but to really understand the, the accent of it and the, the concept of it and to bring it out there, um, to manage to bring out the message that we think and we sometimes don't know how to write. Uh, she's extremely, extremely talented and, um, and amazing diplomatically businesswoman who always manages to get across the message as it should be without hurting any, anyone's feelings. <laughs> and um, Heidi will be talking to us about the power of writing and how, um, how she gets that done and all her advice. So I'm going to mute myself and give her the virtual microphone. There you go, Heidi. Thank you so much. Um, I've been trying to wake up my warrior of power to do this talk because <laughs> I am not a very experienced uh, speaker, even though I work in communication all the time. Uh, it's usually in the background. So, um, as a child, you know, as soon as I could read, I almost lived in the library. I would drag my mom to the library every week and take the maximum amount of books. And I lived in this world of fantasy, you know, and I believe that everything is possible the fantasy kind of seeped in to my real life. And I was really convinced that whatever I wanted, it was gonna happen. And thankfully my parents kind of supported this idea because they kind of taught me uh, the concept of patience and persistence. So reading is probably the first thing that really contributed to um, my own communication. I mean, the more you read, um, the more you enrich your own vocabulary, and the more you can pick up on different ideas, different words, etc. Uh, the, the wider your range of vocabulary, the more effective you will communicate, because sometimes um, it's all in the small nuances, but we'll get to that. So, as a child, so when I was 10, I said I was going to run the London Marathon. When I was 12, I was going to adopt a child. When I was 16, I was going to live in London. And I had all these wild ideas. And looking back on it now, I guess they were my first way of, of writing affirmations because I did write them down and they all happened. Not the next day. I waited 30 years for the marathon. I became a mom at 38 and I moved to London when I was 23. So writing down what you want to achieve in life is extremely powerful. Um, and it doesn't really matter how long it takes to get there. You will get there eventually. And the more you repeat it, the more your brain uh, conditions itself to actually also be open to opportunities to achieve what you have written down. So when we communicate, I mean, for me, communication, I mean, they, the girls know it, it's gardening. I think of 
communication as this really big garden, you know, and it goes in all directions. I plant in other people's gardens, people plant in my gardens, I give people stuff from my garden, you know, when I want to write a letter or when I want to say something, I go to my garden and I put together this bouquet of flowers, which I'm going to give to the other person. And it really is a, you know, it really makes a big difference which bouquet you are offering, you know. So the more you plant in your garden, the more you have to offer. And, you know, my, my son is now 12 years old, doesn't listen to anything I say, you know. We, we all have been there, right? We've all gone through that stage where our parents are just these nagging people, you know. Oh, please, stop it already. But persistence, you plant these little seeds. Because today, at 46, I remember everything my parents said to me. And these words are growing now when I'm an adult. So whatever we do, whatever we say, it really has a massive effect on people. Maybe not tomorrow, but it can be later. So it's better to plant seeds of beautiful flowers than to plant weeds in other people's garden. That's really, really important. You know, it's, it's um, telling your kids how much you love them every day, even if they don't want to hear it, or giving them advice, even if they don't want to hear it. It will, at some point, it will come to fruition and your flowers will bloom in their garden of communication and they will use those flowers because they will remember what they've learned from it. So communication is everywhere. It's, we communicate with ourselves, we communicate with people around us, we communicate with our animals. It's like constant. And it's not just in writing, it's also the way we think, the way we speak everything has a knock-on effect. So, you know, I always, my, my motto in life is what comes out cannot go back in. Okay, you can't take it back. Words are extremely powerful. Um, they can lift you up or they can destroy you. It's as simple as that. And, you know, it is really, really important when you communicate is to get across what you really want to say. So if we move to writing, because obviously in, in spoken communication, it's a little bit what's going on in the moment. And it, it takes a lot of practice to, you know, to communicate effective. My one rule in spoken communication is when I feel that this is getting out of hand, I leave, I leave the room. I just take a moment and I just go and think about it. I just don't want to say things that I cannot undo. Um, so, you know, if I, if things don't go as you like, you know, if you feel that I'm not being heard, this is not, this conversation is not going the way I want it, just step away for a minute. It's no problem, you know, and if you really feel like you are not being heard, then we pass to writing, which is really, really effective. Um, because some people, they just don't listen. And listening is as important in communication as doing the talking. You know, it's probably sometimes even more important if you are in tune with the other person, if you are really hearing what they're saying and you tune in to their vibrations, etc. your reaction will be very different as well. So, writing. You know, I'm not going to talk for too long because, you know, um, it's really before I start writing, I really ask myself, what do I want to say and who am I going to say it to? And what do I want to achieve out of what I'm saying? It's very important to get those three things organized in your mind. And then I write something, whatever comes in my mind. I just write it down. And then I take it to my garden, you know. I look at it and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what I can add to maybe make it a little less harsh. Or maybe, you know, I know this person's character is slightly different from mine. So I'm going to just add some, you know, I'm going to tune into their garden. And I'm going to just use the language that I know will hit home with them. 
So, and this goes for everything, whether it's the telephone company or the bank or my friend or my mom, it doesn't really matter. It really, it, it all follows the same structure. You tune into the other person and you, you, you use their vibration to get your message across. And, you know, I, even when I, speak to the bank or you know just to give one example um we had a house in the north of france and we had a very long litigation and it took 10 years you know they decided the french administration in traditional style decided to teach us a lesson so they spent 10 years preparing this massive file and you know and i did, didn't really do anything wrong but you know um and when it went to court i actually told everybody you know what I don't want any lawyers, you know, they were there, but I don't want anybody to really interfere. I'm just going to talk to the judge and I'm just going to tell him how, how I feel. And that's it, you know, and I really just threw everything out of the window and I just spoke from the heart. It's very important to speak from the heart because they do relate to that. And in France, I mean, we all live in France. It's a foreign country. It's a very difficult culture sometimes to deal with. Mea culpa goes a long way, I have to say. Um, you know, if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. Tant you know. And in the end, we were acquitted of everything. It was it. That was it. That was the end of it. So just my little mini speech to the judge threw everything out. Ten years of, of litigation. So another little tip is just ask for help. That's it, if you, especially if it's in a foreign language. If you don't master the language well enough and if it's a really important issue, it's really better to ask for help or ask somebody's opinion to check your, hi, to check your writing and to make sure that it's, it's, it's good. But it doesn't matter if there are some mistakes. As long as you get your message across, that's it. And to finish off, because I know you, you know, I have a, I have a limited time, but I wanted to finish off with um, something simple is our communication with ourselves. Um, if you really have an important issue, find yourself a very quiet space, just somewhere nice where you're fully, fully relaxed and then talk to yourself. And this is the moment where you will hear the truth coming from yourself. And it is the most powerful way to communicate with yourself. And as Martina says, it's very important to say I love you to our children, even when they misbehave. It's true. The thing I say the most is I love you, but I don't like your behavior right now. Uh, probably I've said it a million times. But I think when we are really, um, like when we really reach that height of communication with ourselves is when we can say I love you to ourselves without any hang-ups then the I love you become the most powerful words that you will hear and they will have the biggest effect on your life. So that's me on communication in a nutshell. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for having me, Beverly and Kim. You know, I'm a big fan of your lunches. <laughs> I think they are amazing and I've made a lot of friends there and they're always very uplifting and inspiring, which is what we definitely all need today in these difficult times. So if there's any questions, um, I'm just going to, maybe Beverly can unmute herself. <laughs> oh, Kimberly. Hi. I have a question. Oh, you have a question. Okay. <laughs> so you, uh, I, okay, so this, oh, I can hear myself. Um, this is a personal question. Um, since you said that uh, it doesn't matter with who you speak, uh, you have that garden mm. that you can speak directly to the person, blah, blah, blah. If mm. you have any advice of how to speak to people who are really, uns you know, uh, write to people who are really uh, unable to understand anything that I write, you know who, I would be happy for that. Um, well, you know, I think, I think that some people, it really depends on their character and some people, you can't change 
And then you do have to learn to accept that. I have a few people like that in life that, you know, you, they're just not open to what you're trying, trying to say. Um, and sometimes, you know, people will only listen to forceful conversation then or to, you know, ultimatums, which is probably the last thing I usually resort to, but sometimes that's the only way to go. Hi, but I if, you swear with my... write, if you want me to help you write a letter, you know, I'm always there for you. <laughs> oh, and that's one other thing I wanted to ask you all to do in today's day and age, is every month, just once a month, pick a person in your family or your friends and send them a handwritten letter through post, through the regular post. It has an incredible effect on people. I do it once a month. Nobody, nobody ever knows when it's coming and they're always super surprised and they absolutely love it. And these letters, they don't go unnoticed or they don't get lost in emails or WhatsApp messages. I mean, everybody, puts them in their keepsake box and, and they reread them at a later age. And then when you're old, you will find them again. Even I today still have letters I wrote to friends when I was 12 and they wrote back to me. And sometimes I open that box and it's, it's such a nice feeling. Unless it's French post, yes, I agree. <laughs> but it gets there. <laughs> so that's it. That was my little tip. If you want to spread some positivity and some light especially now, um, just pick a person and write a handwritten letter because we don't get them anymore and they really make a big difference. That's it for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Heidi. And thank you, Marav. And thank you, Kim. And thank you, everyone who came today.